Good morning, my name is Amber. I'm a flower farmer florist from Blooms on Hill in Budgery in Victoria, Australia. And it's a beautiful day. I think it's winter tomorrow, but it's about 20 degrees today, so I'm in a t-shirt. And weirdly, I have cat ears on. I put a um, head, <laughs> I had this headband on this morning. It was sitting on the kitchen table. It's my daughter's and it's very handy. And then I've realized I'm still wearing it keeping my hair off my face slightly. Anyway, we're dealing with me with cat ears today. Um, I am going to plant some bare root roses. I ordered just three from a Trilor Roses, which is a big flower, a uh, big rose nursery in Australia. They always come really well packed and boxed and they're always really healthy. So I got some from them last year. I'm going to gradually add to my rose collection and I also bought some from my local nursery at Merby North too so they were good as well so I've got some dotted around in amongst my garden but these ones I'm going to plant in these rows here so I've got my edge row it's just this mound of grass behind me here uh, it's sort of uh, not it's on the edge of the row so I've got to clear it first and in the meantime I've had my roses here soaking so they've been in the bucket, there's the three together. Just the rose, uh, the roots sitting in the water. You're supposed to have them in some water, just clean water for 24 hours at least, or even up to 48 hours, just rehydrating after it's come through the post. So the first step is to get rid of all this grass. My favorite tool for weeding is my hori hori knife. I didn't have one of these last season and it's the best thing ever. I think I've probably talked about it before, but it's really good for getting right down and cutting. I probably can't really see what I'm doing, but like I'm just getting down and sawing out my weeds because they've got, it's got that serrated edge. It's really handy. It makes it really easy. The other thing I've also used a lot when I'm on the knees <laughs> is my old lady knee pad. My friend gave that to me. I'm not really that old. Oh, well, I'm kind of getting old, um, but, oh, geez, it makes a difference. <laughs> Poor old knees. Anyway, I'm getting this cleared out and I'm gonna go along just enough to pit uh, my three roses in. So I'm going to leave a meter in between each one. And I think eventually I'll clear this whole line and I put roses down in my flower patch last season and they're along side running parallel to a whole bank of blackberries so I've got to get all those blackberries out there just in the wrong spot they shouldn't be there they're a noxious weed so I wouldn't mind shifting those roses so that I can get all the blackberries out get all that killed off and then put a whole new garden bed down there so I think they're just those roses are being in the way anyway it's a work in progress. Back to <laughs> back to digging out weeds. Okay, I've cleared a space. You can see here. And it's long enough to put three roses in with a metre apart. Uh, so what I have to do now is dig the holes. My favourite job, digging. They need to be about 30 centimeters wide and 30 centimeters deep. Okay, so that's the first step. I use a really small <laughs> shovel because I'm quite small. We do have a nice big one, which is heavier. And hubby is like, oh, that one's better. And it is better, but it's also heavier. So I always go with well, it's easier to handle, so I don't end up more sore than I already do. Anyway, soil's good, it's not too hard, that's nice. Oh dear, digging is horrible. So these roses aren't overly huge, and the roots aren't massive either. Sometimes you get them and the roots are large and you can see they're like the really fine ones so you can actually trim to fit your hole the, the the thicker roots but don't cut the fine ones 
So the first step is to, well, you've dug your hole. Can you see my hole? There's my hole, it's probably too deep, but I'll build that up a bit and you create a mound of dirt inside your hole for your rose roots to sit over. So if these roots were bigger, it would kind of actually be easier to do. So I'm gonna actually backfill my hole a little bit. And then you get that bit there, the graft. So you want to have that sitting about two and a half centimeters out of the soil. Okay, so it's not really rocket science, but just a couple of things to remember. Now I'm just checking the depth of that. And you can place a stick, it's just fallen over, across your hole and so that you can check the level of where your your rose is sitting in terms of how deep it is okay i can see where it's sitting and i'm pretty happy with it at this point you'd want to arrange the roots around the mound of soil that you've just put in there mine are so small that i don't <laughs> need arranging uh, at this point you'd put some of that mycorrhizal fungi on it if you had it i don't actually have any i should but i haven't so I'm not going to, that's the step I'm missing. That would be beneficial, I'm sure. So at this point, you just partially, if you've got it, add it. If not, do what I'm doing. So uh, add some soil back in so that your root, <laughs> the rose doesn't fall over like that. So just partially backfill it now. Okay, so partially backfilled, hole is not completely full with dirt, obviously. And now I'm going to give it a really good water. All right, giving it a good water. Now I just finish filling it in and then give it another really good water as well. Then from there, for the next two, three weeks, depending of course on the weather, but the next couple of weeks, make sure that you give it a really good water each week. If it's really dry, then you might want to you know, stretch that out, out a little bit. It's, I don't know what our weather's gonna do. It's warm today, it's supposed to be winter tomorrow. But your new rose will probably not give you much in terms of blooms the first season. You're probably really even best not picking off it. You might even want to disbud it so that you let the roots get really established. But don't expect much the first year. You can from then, depending on how much uh, in terms of the stems that you've got there, like the, the branches going on, you might want to give those a trim when you put it in. Look at my washing in the background. Um, so that once again your rose is just concentrating all of its efforts on the roots. You might be interested to see what kind of roses I'm actually planting. I've got the tags in my pocket. They are both, they're all three of them are a white one. So this lovely white one, it's called Taniki and it's a hybrid tea. So all the roses I've been buying are hybrid teas. My cat headband is not doing a good job with my hair. And I did buy a beautiful David Austin rose. It's a climber last season. So I might get some more of those just for my garden. But yeah, hybrid teas are the ones that you want for cutting. Okay, so if you're wanting them for cut flowers, hybrid teas. Now it's completely planted. So I'm just going to give it some more water, of course. So more water, more water, more water. So I'll give that a really good drink. And that's really it. And then I'll just plant the other two. I'm going to give them a meter apart from the other one there. And then eventually I think I'll fill that row. So these roses will be in with these echinacea that are next to it and the weeds. And then there's the peonies that I've been putting in here. And the other side I've now got, I've got three penstemons and I also have some uh, perennial phlox, which would be lovely too. So this is going to be a perennial bed going on here rather than the cornflowers that I had in last season. So this should all be good all once it comes up. It obviously doesn't look like much now, but we're looking forward to it being in bloom. Anyway, that's all it is to it when it comes to roses they're not difficult definitely get some because they're fantastic and there's so many types and i'm going to keep on <laughs> investing in roses i do have quite a lot around my actual garden area i think i bought 15 last season 
and I've got lots of different colors. These three, of course, are the white ones. I do have another three white ones over there, the other part of my garden that I bought last season. I'm, of course, thinking, you know, white is handy for weddings. I'm going to invest in a few more pink ones too. But as I said, I'm probably going to move some of these ones and you know, it's just another job to do. So do get yourself lots of roses. They're absolutely beautiful. I love them. They always were my favorite flower until I discovered dahlias. So it's kind of a toss up between which one, probably the dahlias. But anyway, the other thing, oh, the other tip I did learn fairly recently was I do get a lot of black spot on my roses here. And that's the one thing with roses is the disease. You can buy more disease resistant types, which is, you know, a good idea. It doesn't affect the flowers. So don't really stress too much. I mean, you can stress, but you just, you know, you got to worry unnecessarily really in terms of what you're going to end up with your picking flowers. The other thing I've heard lately is that uh, planting salvias with them is a good idea because that can uh, fight any of those pests and diseases so that companion planting could be a good idea too i do have lots of salvias around my garden but maybe i might try some near my roses maybe anyway hope you planted something today i'm going to keep on with this job and then keep enjoying this weather i'll probably go and pick some more straw flowers because they tend to open up in the sun while they're open who knows how much longer we've got this nice weather for and then we're going to keep going with this mess down here which is my dahlia patch i have been I've been digging up and putting them in in plastic buckets and storing them under my house. So we're getting there with all of that. Anyway, I'll catch you next time. Bye.